Good morning, everyone. So yes, we will be talking about Chris Burden. He was born in Boston in 1946, and he grew up in France and Italy. When he was 12, he was actually involved in a motorcycle accident in Italy that required his foot to be operated on without anesthesia. This traumatic event seemed to be the catalyst for his future works that focused on self-inflicted physical pain as performance art. Burden moved back to the States and finished high school in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He then studied at Pomona College and received his MFA from UC Irvine. His master's thesis actually consisted of his shutting himself in a locker for five days without food, with a five-gallon jug of water above him and a five-gallon jug below him for waste. His best-known work from that time is perhaps the 1971 performance piece called Shoot, in which he was shot in the left arm by an assistant from a distance of about 16 feet with a 22 rifle. So today, we won't be focusing as much on his performance art, but more on his physical pieces. As AJ mentioned, he recently got to see Burden at the Orange County Museum of Art. Between uh, 1974 and 1983, Burden received four National Endowment for the Arts grants, and from 1978 to 2005, he served on the faculty at UCLA. Burden's later work moved away from performance and veered more towards these large-scale sculptures and installations with small, multiple parts fueled by his interest in war toys and models. The Tale of Two Cities, here, expresses the complicated feelings that Burden had about war and militarization and the role that the United States played in that. And as we can see, AJ, of course, was able to see the work in person. Maybe his most recognizable work, Urban Light is an installation that has been at LACMA since 2008. It consists of 202 restored antique lamps from the 1920s that were located throughout Los Angeles, mainly in downtown at the time. Burton actually bought the first two lamps after seeing them at the Rose Bowl flea market. He then sourced the other 200 and restored and installed them at the museum's Welcome Plaza. And the lamps are on and open to the public 24 seven and have really become a landmark and attraction for Los Angeles. Burden had an interest in built structures and how they play a role in reflecting cultures. Dreamer's Folly is a series of three highly ornamental cast iron gazebos reminiscent of those common to traditional English gardens. The three gazebos have been reconfigured to form one structure Lacy Tree of Life fabrics are draped around the exterior to complete a beautiful sanctuary in which to dream. The gallery size installation, All the Submarines of the United States of America from 1987, consists of 625 identical small handmade painted cardboard models that represent the entire United States submarine fleet, dating from the late 1890s when submarines entered the naval's arsenal to the late 1980s. He suspended the cardboard models on monofilaments from the ceiling, placing them at various heights so that as a group, they kind of appear to look like a school of fish swimming through the gallery. Metropolis II is an intense kinetic sculpture modeled after a fast paced, frenetic modern city. And this is located at LACMA again. These steel beams form an eclectic grid interwoven with an elaborate system of 18 roadways, including one six lane freeway. And these miniature cars speed through the city at 240 scale miles per hour every hour and circulate through the dense network of buildings. According to Burden, quote, the noise, the continuous flow of the trains and the speeding toy cars produce in the viewer the stress of living in a dynamic, active and bustling 21st century city. Here's another view of Metropolis 2. This is my personal favorite because I've actually seen this work in person and it's really mesmerizing. You can just stand there for hours looking at all the little moving pieces. In 2008, uh, Chris Burden embarked on Xanadu, an ambitious concept for a human scale cityscape that would be populated with his own sculptures. Burden described the piece as 
a metaphorical city condensed to the essentials. Though he never got to see Xanadu realized during his lifetime, it survives in model form at a much reduced scale. Henry Burden, unrelated to Chris, was a Scottish engineer who lived in Troy, New York. He's credited with creating the most powerful vertical water wheel in history in 1851, called the Burden Water Wheel. Chris Burden created a sketch of his version of the Burden Water Wheel in 2013. However, it was never physically realized before his death in 2015. Another type of wheel, this is the big wheel that he created in 1979. The work is composed of a motorcycle and a very large cast iron flywheel, which spins when the motorcycle engine is revved. And this was made at a point in Burden's career where his sculptures focused on engineering and technology. So we looked at Dreamer's Folly a few slides ago, and now this is Nomadic Folly, again, having interest in how structures reflect different cultures. First presented at the Istanbul Biennale in 2001, this installation is his fantasy of a cultivated nomad's tent. The structure is comprised of a large wooden deck made of Turkish cypress and four huge umbrellas. And visitors can relax and linger in the tent-like structure, replete with opulent handmade carpets, braided ropes, hanging glass and metal lamps, and rich, sensuous fabrics while soothing Turkish Armenian music plays. Sometimes referred to as the evil Knievel of art, Burden really pushed the boundaries of what was acceptable in art, forcing viewers and critics to maybe redefine their narrow definitions of what art was and what it could do. And he helped prove that art did not have to result in an object and that art could be pushed to its extreme limits. Thank you. <laughs>